This is going to be a quick one. And this is a reply to a comment left on my previous lecture on what's wrong with whiteness. I believe there is something wrong with the term whiteness, the subculture that follows. And that's the reason why we have whiteness studies, right? Well, I'd like to further elaborate on whiteness studies as a conspiracy, as critics like to say, and as well market popularity that happens within subcultures and consumer interests. That we, we tend to forget that, you know, we're on YouTube, a uh, video online platform, and we're listening to people share their uh, lectures and opinions on matters of things, and some people are just intolerant of new ideals. It's not to say that this is a form of liberalism, but some actually believed, or at least, that everything is kind of the zeitgeist behavior of what's trending and what's not trending. And those who believe in things like metapolitics or a culture war have it all wrong because we're being we're under capitalism and we're already being exploited as subcultural people. So I suggest that you stop this lecture and go listen to the previous lecture, What's Wrong with Whiteness, as I make a clear and concise argument about everything wrong with whiteness and why one should actually study and be interested in whiteness studies. But I'd like to focus on a comment left by a fellow so-called white nationalist who thinks it's a white nationalist, but let alone just some kind of punk rocker with extra spare time and you know has a lot to say on their mind. But if you read this comment, you know, he's talking about the difference between middle class values and whatnot, and he's kind of offended that white is an identity group, that it is a racial category, and that really being anti-white means actually anti-whiteness, and he's not getting across the point that he's so he is himself deracinated and is attached to a sub subculture. In addition, he makes the arguments that supposedly this is, again, a metapolitical culture war game of winning people's votes over all this mythology that capitalism teaches people. And so I'm going to spend the entire lecture debunking this comment alone. I first would like to read my reply to him and write, Well, whiteness studies is a thing. It's a discipline. That's what they want it to be called. It's legitimate. It refers to the Eurocentric standard of middle-class values, bourgeois values, which are institutionalized and thus creates deracinated people. No bias there. Deracinated people. You're no longer French, German, Irish. You're deracinated. No identity. White, I could agree, is an easy term to categorize admixture European people. You know, you go to the DMV, what are you, Caucasoid or white, right? But it's the semantics and subculture that is attached to the word said white. So it's important to call out whiteness because there is no egalitarian and egalitarianism and unification between different European peoples. A French person is not going to side with white people. A German person is not going to side with common other white people. This is a myth white nationalists tell themselves in order to believe that Ethno-nationalism, as they like to call it, is a kind of intersectional, altruistic, support all nationalisms and they'll support you back when really they are the deracinated people. And in this hypothetical example, you support Russian nationalism and then the Russian nationalists kill off all the deracinated white people. It's like being, it's like having a visectomy and adopting children. Makes sense, right? Let me repeat. There is no such thing as metapolitics. No one will be unified under whiteness because of such deracination and vagueness. They will see it as a other groups who don't are not in whiteness. They will see it as a hostile identity bent on crass intellectual behavior, suburban nationalism. You know, Brandon Adamson's alt left. Who you know has you get that indoor joke. It already has caused much divisions, and the enemy wants it that way. The enemy wants to hear the word, the white race, white people with white interests. It's very 
to use mean language federal, fed stuff. Now, if you believe in an alien, non-white group of people that also advocate whiteness studies, of course, there can be a problem, and they're doing it for selfish reasons, because a non-white is hating those groups, and you could say it's bent on racism. But keep in mind, there is sincerity to whiteness studies coming from both white and non-white academics and intellects. You know, this isn't just a CIA program that wants to destroy the white race, as some of you white nationalists would like to believe, or a cabal of Jews going around. I facetiously said back that the CIA is too busy advocating postmodernity to keep everyone centrist. I guess the truth of the matter. And postmodernity also legitimizes white nationalists to be its own subculture so they can listen to Deaf and June and Boyd Rice, not because it's avant-garde hate, but because the roots of our European culture and to continue Strathmere, New Jersey, what, Sea Isle, New Jersey, Altoona, Pennsylvania, and somehow we'll make the next generation listening to Boyd Rice and reading Evola, and we can have apple pies and whatnot, kind of that fetishism. It's also the same fetishist types of people that believe that the perpetrators are Noli Gatiev and uh, Harold Bloom and Larry David, which uh, Larry David is confused right now because, like in Curb Your Enthusiasm, he's an asshole, but he didn't know what he did wrong. He's just pointing out there's something wrong with white people. Yeah, he's Jewish, but I don't know, there's just something wrong here. You know, who are these perpetrators, right? I mean, as much as I, I really dislike Harold Bloom, and I, could, and I can make a legitimate criticism, criticism that Bloom is using his Jewish power in order to subvert Western English literature, which I strongly believe is true, does not make me an anti-Semite. I'm criticizing Jewish power structure, but there's no, say, all of my problems is Jewish. Or, oh, there, this is just some Heideggerian race relations, human by diversity, uh, social Darwinianism, where Jews are fighting against whites and blacks against whites, and whites are all ganged up in a poor interracial gangbang. And, they're, and, and you know, white nationalists finally want to get to the top, right? Supposedly. But again, this is just a little goofiness because all of this is just some kind of identity, politic, I'm offended because you harmed my odd pole type of theory. Well, again, it's all in the semantics. I believe Greg Johnson calls himself a white nationalist. Jared Taylor, a white advocate. And David Duke some time ago used to call himself a European-American. These were all just trying to talk about European racial preservation, correct? But it's the word white, right? The word white nationalist seems militant. And white advocate seems like suburban nationalism. And European-Americans feels like taking the richness of German engineering and French philosophy into the state of Pennsylvania, right? Maybe there is something wrong with using a bland term as a subculture and interest, right? That the word white, just like black, has that connotation of belonging to an immediate identity politic group of post-ex-libertarianism. I understand that the word black in America has a black race, even though they don't admit it, and all blacks are supposed to hate white people, and that is, of course, a problem. The word Nazi in white is as vague as black, Asian, and anything that falls under the neoliberal order. And maybe that anything anti-white, as white nationalists like to call it, is actually not evil, and maybe it's just open to criticism. That when somebody says, you know, I'm anti- Jewish, you write, or Jewish power structure, anti-blackness, right? May, that itself has some opposites to it, right? And every word has its own systematic history, correct? And entomology, right? And so instead of playing into the game of racial interest, maybe it's about values, and when did bourgeois and middle class values become itself a race of people? It's actually never, it did. And so why in the world would I just be against middle class values and that I have to play this one-sided game of, as Greg Johnson likes to say, everything is on the table except white extinction. And again, this is the hypocrisy of some white nationalists where 
they will not even realize that capitalism out of all systems is that real white anti-white perpetrator but that doesn't matter because white extinction is more important but who is creating white extinction and so they will get this messed up and they think it's the jews and not something that white people are doing or that whiteness that's the whole point of whiteness studies is realizing whiteness studies is not good for anyone but anyway, Countercurrents is already a biased publication, as Greg Johnson has sadly been open about his hatred for Slavzoy Zizek, where you think Zizek would side with the reactionary writings of Countercurrents. But again, Johnson doesn't like Zizek because he got his feelings hurt because he said, the question whether the white race will survive makes him feel like he's some kind of Jewish neoliberal shill, right? And he just has hate in his heart. And he's not talking about the white race and the semantics I was previously arguing about. Middle class interest. Right? And there's some footnotes Johnson is not reading. You know, Johnson is also biased in the fact that he won't read Jack Derrida because he's Jewish or something. Johnson completely lacks an entire canon of Marxist, Hegelian, postmodern literature. That's just not his thing. He just wants to read christian studies and whatever but at you know whenever you do do a keyword search on countercurrents on zizek you see nothing more than these words parping up um what is it larping jewy uh parentheses oy vey again these bias semantic cult of everything that huh Everything I don't like is literally Jewish, or everything I don't like is literally Hitler, but for that matter, the Hitlerites saying everything I don't like is literally Jewish, and that itself becomes a novelty, that there's no sincere intellectualism in this. It's rather, let's take the nip in the bud. I don't want you to read this. I want you in my own cult and not be open for criticism. I don't want to read whiteness studies because it won't help our people quote-unquote, and using their own jargon and semantics. They are creating walls of their own stubbornness. And besides, countergurns is nothing more than a capitalist enterprise, so Johnson can pay rent every month. But anyway, my bond market popularity, as I was saying, to use an example here, Donald Trump openly called himself a nationalist, but as white nationalists like to prick, will he also ever call himself a white nationalist? This is ironic because politicians want any number of consumers, right? And if you think everybody's going to come on the white nationalist side for some Christian, open-minded saviorism of, I'm white, let's go with semantics, stop thinking too hard about this, right? Then we'll win, right? But again, again, capitalism directly wants numbers. Metapolitics or culture war is a byproduct of accelerating technology and of postmodernity, which white nationalists completely avoid talking about. And if they do, it's some facetious flirtation and postmodernity talk, and white gnats are afraid to read that because it crossovers into Marxism, and they're afraid to read that because then all of a sudden, what I just said, what's wrong with whiteness? There is something wrong with whiteness, and this is what white nationalists don't want to talk about. So to use their jargon, the real anti-white or hatred of white people, again, to use their semantics, is coming from capitalism. To create a bourgeois middle-class people deracinated with that identity make profit exploit a fellow man you might as well join a cult and be in one universe they want that they want everyone isolated in suburban houses you know but i guess my answer to all this is that what you're really supposed to do is dox secretive groups that exploit the common people alex jones did this when he visited the bohemian gardens filmed and recorded the jeffrey epstein types that run who are at the top, who use cryptocurrency, who decentralize the market, who say all this good stuff and rhetoric that trickled down through the internet and think that everything is this reactionary anarchist movement, right, of resistance and rebellion. It turns out this is what the system wants. And so it's ironic that when I criticize, when I say what's wrong with whiteness, white nationalists think this is some Jewish operation. It's not true. It's just a common criticism of what's not being done. You know, the only way you can have racial preservation is if you were to have children in the family.
That doesn't mean you have to go buy a house and live in middle class America, but that always follows suit. And so, again, by exposing the power structure, one could understand what's really happening to the common people, right? And calling out these cults because the real perpetrators are not this cabal of conspiratorial Jews. It's cult-like people that unfortunately dwell in their own queer culture misery. So, class dismiss, and thanks for listening.